Earlier this morning, I published a little piece on using a single sifter to uh, make a staccato shot. This is based on the idea that when you sift, the finer particles come out first. So you could use a sifter, uh, a, a coarser sifter, and end up with three layers. So this test was done with 500 microns, and then I did another one that was 600, using 600 micron screen. It's kind of fun. I went to my usual Robusta shot in the morning. Um, I've been trying to tweak the profile and the paper filter, and I, I went back uh, to the drawing board to kind of think of what I could do differently. So this one, I put a little bit less coffee in. I was trying to look at the headspace, because one of the issues is when water's coming out of the shower screen, it will, will have a surface tension. So it tends to clump up and this can lead to problems, um, which I think is essentially what's going on in, in my explorations into um, the shower screen. But this shot was great. This had a nice, nice extraction, you know, like 18%, 14% uh, TDS. Um, so there's some, some side channeling and some areas it could have improved on, but then I, I pulled another shot for uh, my wife to make a um, oat milk eggnog latte. Um, and this shot pulled really nice. I, I did a little bit less as well. Um, it still pulls to the left. So, you know, I, it's, I, I guess part of the frustration is I know, I know where the problem is. I'm just uncertain on exactly how to fix it. So I've, I've mitigated it quite a bit using the, the paper filter on top, but it's still, there's something missing. And then I, I pulled my normal staccato tamp shot uh, with paper filter. You know, I'm, I'm trying to balance making the, the profile um, get flow faster versus, um, you know, having some channeling or, or getting the right extraction. One of the issues I've been having is if I pause, if I end up with a pause in the middle of the profile, it makes this uh, side channeling to the left a little worse. So this one channeled in the, in the center at the top, but at the, at the bottom, of the, yeah, this crescent moon again is it pulling to the left. Um, I did a little bit of roast at lunchtime with uh, coffee beans from the uh, C Cup of Excellence for uh, Columbia. They were leftover beans from a very sampling at chromatic and they smell and look great. So hopefully they taste great. Talking with Tom Vu on the um, Home Espresso Aficionados channel on Facebook, uh, he was talking to me about a technique that it, it's like nuntation, uh, nuntating uh, a coffee puck, which is where you roll the um, tamper around the sides to get a, a denser puck, but it's the problem is it's um, has some consistency problems. So he was using a OCD tool. So I used my cheap knockoff one and he's spinning it the opposite direction. So it's pushing the grounds rather than trying to flatten them. And the intention is to push out as, as much air as possible. Um, and he found that if, if he goes a little coarser on the grind and then does this, um, the flow comes out better. And for him, it starts in the center, which is probably uh, because he's using a rocket. And, um, and that's how the, the shower screen is coming out. Um, and then it goes to the side, but he doesn't have uh, some of the tooling in terms of refractometers. So we were ch chatting about it and, and, and he asked if I was interested in trying it out. And so I figured, sure, why not? I usually do not tamp this hard. I, I tamp very light. Um, my aim is to be more level than tamp hard. So I gave it a go. Um, and this was my normal grind for this bean is on a five on the niche. This grind was on a 15. Um, it was a little coarse, um, but what was interesting is the shot timings were about the same as before. And, um, but the extraction yield was lower. Um, so I, I went a little finer and, and tried it again, but 
uh, this came out really clean, especially the puck afterwards. Like, so there's clearly some channeling to the side, but the puck afterwards didn't have any spots. Um, and in the middle of this, I messed around with uh, trying to do tamped on squid with a, a, a back massager and a uh, basket and a tamper to see how that uh, technique would work. Um, Cause that's basically what Teddy's doing. Tamped on squid uses vibration plus the tamper on top to redistribute the grounds. So I, I just wanted to see how this would work on my own. And um, I asked him if I just use a, if I put a tamper in and, and use some kind of vibration tool, would it work? And he said, try it. So I tried it. Anyways, that was on spec grounds. I went back to this uh, deep nuntating uh, technique um, and I went to a grind setting of 10. So it's still a higher, coarser grind than typical, but the shot came out almost like it normally does um, for a regular grind and a regular tamp. But again, you have this hard channel to the left. So based on how it channeled, I think it should have had a higher extraction yield. But this is what's amazing is the bottom of the puck, you don't see any of that. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Still frustrated by the shower screen. I put on the old uh, shower screen onto the S-Works diffuser to see what would happen. Of course, you know, water shoots out the sides. Um, but uh, uh, it, it inspired me to try something else because there's a space between the shower screen and the diffuser. And so my concern is that when water's coming out, it's um, group bunching up together. So I put a paper filter inside of there to see uh, what I would get if as I ran water through it. It seemed to come out more even this is just the rinse cycle. Um, the problem here is you still have these two streams. See, it's pulling together. And I think this is one of the design challenges of the shower screen is you, you, you need the water to spread out and water, especially at low flows, does not want to do that. But it is at low flows that you can really do some amazing things um, when it distributes right. So this is my, my actual profile. Um, so it's it's kind of steaming out, but this is better than it normally is. Um, but again, it's pulling together at the the, the center, which is it was kind of challenging. Um, so it seems it seems to pull on the left. So I pulled a shot with this. Um, the the paper the uh, paper in between the shower screen and the diffuser didn't really get dirty, um, but the puck pulled the same as it would if I just had the paper on top. Um, which, which is again frustrating, and I feel like there's a better solution out there that's not necessarily, you know, the metal mesh that a lot of people have been using that I've used quite a bit as well. So, we'll see what I find. So today was a little lighter on shots. I didn't take that uh, pull that many. I pulled this Rubusa shot, and I pulled it a little bit longer. I went to like a 1.5 ratio, and I ended up with uh, like a 20% extraction yield, and it was nice. So it came out at a nice, uh, nice really like good presentation at the beginning. You know, it came out really even. I think the, the issue with this basket is that uh, if you pack it too small, then it's too small of a shot, but if, if you go too much, it doesn't flow right, and um, I feel like I, I wish I had a, a better uh, single basket and I can make this a true single with a screen but it's I don't know it's bothersome sometimes to do it especially when I, I'm just trying to have a drink, drink coffee in the morning and then I um, went on to make a new top filter based on a star because uh, this worked before um, and I like it's slightly modified, not to this extreme, and and I got what I paid for. This is like a 1.3 output to input ratio shot uh, with a 17% TDS and a 23% extraction. Rate. So even though it really pulled to this one side, again, um, it started off really even, so it still came out really nice and, and tasted incredible, of course. Um, you know, the filter kind of got stuck to the shower head, so I just took a quick video because I thought it was fun to see how the, the water came through.
on the paper. And then on the bottom, you can see there was some channeling in the middle. Um, and then I switched to this other paper filter, which put a little edge around it because I was curious. I, I feel like there's uh, the, the paper filter will pull water uh, horizontally. Um, so that's why the, 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 there are tips and they, they pull water. The aim is to pull water to the center. Um, and that made me if you could pull water off the edge. This one didn't have as high of an extraction yield. It was uh, only like uh, 20%, um, but it was still, it was a good shot. It was a, a, the last of this bag. So I'll move on to a new coffee tomorrow. And um, this is the bottom of the shot. There's a tiny bit of channeling in the center, but it was, it was a really great day, so. Today was a day of new roast and dark roast. This shot was from Robusta that I processed using sourdough bread or sourdough starter for 24 hours. And then I ended up double roasting it because the first time I roasted it, it was very underdeveloped. So I did it again because I figured I might as well mess it up rather than have a messed up under roast roast. Um, so it was quite dark, but not like bad bitter wise. Um, definitely better with milk, but I like it. I'm gonna have it straight a few more times. Then I used another sourdough um, coffee that I did at the same time as the Robusta using um, Ethiopian and Guatemalan beans. And again, it, it I had to double roast it because the sourdough bread ones are hard to like, stay in the mindset for roasting um, because I, I think I hear, it's hard to hear the first crack and then they get a little brown. But again, this is like much darker than I normally would um, drink a coffee, uh, but it was interesting because it doesn't have like the bad bitter taste that I don't like about dark roast, traditional dark roast, and which I think is part of the sardo pressing. Then my wife wanted uh, an eggnog latte over ice. Um, so I used um, five grams of, of roast that I just ended of a regular uh, Arabica and then um, some Robusta, the sourdough Robusta. And, and it came out tasting like a milkshake with the, uh, it was the oat milk eggnog from Trader Joe's. Um, it's quite nice. Then I, I did a coffee roast where I did some, uh, used some uh, Colombian beans from leftover beans from Cup of Excellence that I, I was either given or stole from Chromatic Coffee, we shall never know. And um, so then I, I pulled out one more roast that I, I needed to use sooner rather than later. Uh, this was a, a lactic maceration. Um, that I went a little darker on. I, I The first crack took like five minutes to complete, which usually it takes like a minute and a half or two minutes on my roaster. Um, and so I, 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 I am using a little early. This is at six days after a humidity treatment rather than the usual seven days, but usually I go seven days plus a few more days of, of just, you know, letting it rest. Um, and it pulled out uh, really interesting. Like it was very even. Um, the shot pull was very even in terms of flow. I pulled out very center wise. Uh, this was a 17% TDS at 19% extraction yield um, at a very low ratio. It's like a like almost a one to one. Um, so then I thought I could, you know, based on how the shot time was like 70 seconds or so. So I was like, okay, let's let me dial this back a little bit. So I went a little bit coarser. I went from a, a setting zero to a setting five on the niche. And I had this shot, um, which, uh, so the time it took to cover the filter was closer to what, what I'm normally used to seeing, which is around like 10 to 20 seconds, whereas the previous shot was 33 seconds. Um, and then it covered very nicely and it was able to do the pause. So my profile has a, a steam pre-infusion, pre-infusion, and then a pause, and then a ramp back up where I typically do uh, pressure or pressure pulsing, but I removed it from the profile until I can get even through the pause. But usually the pause has issues because of the transient behavior of the water dispenser causing uh, channeling to the left side. 
and that's I, the pause just makes that worse. So anyways, this shot was ridiculous. So it was delicious. It was had a, a bitterness, but not like the uh, gross bitterness. And it was 22.66 is here, but the first reading was 22.7 uh, TDS, which means the extraction yield on this shot was uh, just over 25%. Um, and the shot ratio was uh, like a, around a 1.1 output to input. So I want you to make note of that because that's ridiculously high and I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. So come back tomorrow for more. Today was a day of high extraction. I didn't do any experiments. I just pulled some shots today using a lactic maceration that I got from Ivera Chromatic. This is a darker roast, um, but with the um, lactic, lactic maceration, uh, you can go a little bit darker and it doesn't have such bitterness. So what's insane is, so this first shot is 17% TDS and it gives a 20% extraction yield. So very high, very delicious. And then I, I used La Pavoni twice today and uh, both shots did incredibly well. They were both around 16.5% TDS at about 22.5% extraction yield. So both of these shots were like a 1.3 to 1 output to input ratio. Um, and I'm extracting like everything. Um, they're really delicious. Um, they were, you know, the bitter flavor was much more there, but also they had just such a syrup, like a deep chocolate kind of thing going on. And it didn't have what I don't like about darker roast. Because um, I, I don't mind a bitter taste, but when it tastes like a burn taste, that's when I, I'm, I'm not a fan. So really, really I'm liking this roast, even though this is one of the darkest roasts that I've been using this long. I usually can't use them that long. So this one came off a, lot, a little lopsided. It's because I didn't tamp it hard enough and it kind of got stuck when I tried to put the filter basket in the porter filter. Um, this one too had a little bit of lopsidedness. Uh, you know, it's quite possible that the table this is on is um, not level. So I, I haven't checked that, but I should. Um, still, the, the shots on uh, both the Decent Espresso and La Pavone came out really nice. But I did scheme for some experiments. So I want to do some experiments on uh, refractometer calibration, on... Um, like whether how calibration affects final the final result and how um calibration can can calibration drift or not you know i just haven't seen any data on it and the other experiment i want to do is pull off the uh water dispenser from the decent espresso and see if i can make a modification so it doesn't have that loop the problem is it has a loop and i i suspect it's causing some turbulence as the two streams run into each other, um, as I've shown in previous videos. Obviously these shots were able to perform pretty well. And what's interesting about them is that um, they're using, uh, they're able to actually get up to two bars. They still have some, some side channeling, um, but they're using this star paper filter on top. And this one actually has a paper filter in between the shower head and the S-Works dispenser or diffuser, diffuser. So, anyways, come back for more tomorrow. I spent a bit of time last night looking at the water dispenser here and the, well, this is the piece it screws into and just the marks, the water marks that were left over after water went through it. And when I looked at the bottom side, this is the side that touches the diffuser um, the left side has more water stains than the right side, which is probably because of how the water has been flowing. Um, I took a look, look again here. I, I've been using a piece of paper, a um, paper filter, AeroPress paper filter uh, in between the shower screen and the diffuser. I've st still been using the star paper filter on top of the puck 
So I'm not sure if it's the combination of both and I don't really have time to tease that out this week. So next week I'll give it a go, but this piece of paper wasn't too badly stained, which is a good sign. I published a little piece about Robusta. I messed up a Robusta shot a little bit ago and I was mad because the extraction yield was really low. And so I remixed the grounds and pulled the shot again. And the second shot was better, even though they were both about the same extraction yield. So I think Robusta as, as a whole is uh, better in that sense than Arabica, because if you screw up an Arabica shot and do this, it won't be quite the same, especially not as a straight shot. But if you're interested in reading about it, um, check out the, the link on my um, meeting page. I started with a larger Robusta shot than normal, and this pulled to about a 15% TDS and 21% extraction yield. Um, and then I actually didn't even drink it straight. I had a cappuccino this morning with oat milk, which I typically don't have, but um, I just didn't feel like I had the time to do data because I was a little, a little busy in my day, busier than usual. But I just love how this forms um, this darker roast. Um, so, and this is the sourdough Robusta as well. Um, so it was, it was quite good milk. This is the lactic acid maceration on La Pavoni. Um, I still haven't quite gotten the divot on this the right way. I, I made a little plastic tool for, for this one as well. Um, but I did the, you know, pre-infuse for 10 seconds and then I, I pushed down to, to cover the filter and then let this sit for a little while. So there's some channeling on the left and uh, there's a slow bit in the center. Uh, but in terms of extraction, you know, there's still really good. It was like 17% TDS at a 20% extraction yield. So it was, uh, it was a very delicious shot. It um, has a really uh, you know, rich and syrupy uh, aftertaste. But that's uh, both in part because of uh, strength-wise, it's really strong, and um, it's a darker roast. So it gives more of that um, syrupy taste. So it's the same roast on the decent espresso and this one came out at 19 percent tds and 21 percent extraction yield so i i'm just in love with being able to pull these intenso shots again uh like the the strength of these is out of this world um and i mean part of this is because it's a dark roast but part of it is also the profile so when i go back to lighter arabica roast i i'll i'll get similarly high uh, extraction yield which is exciting even though there's a little bit of donut in here and kind of circles around the stream kind of circles and is a little eccentric but it's a beautiful shot come back tomorrow today was only two shots of coffee it was a, a low coffee day so this is a uh, robusta this is the uh, process in sourdough robusta and it came out very dark and very strong. This is a 18% TDS at 21% extraction yield. Um, and it was, it was uh, something else. So, and, and the bitterness wasn't um, overwhelming like a normal dark roast would be. Then I did a regular roast of uh, the Ethiopian bean, Guatemalan bean, and a little of the uh, cup of excellence Colombian beans I got um, so this is one minute past the first crack which is my usual and um, I'll find out in like one to two weeks how good this is um, then I pulled another shot of this is a uh, yeast processed roast like at the farm uh, the only problem was in uh, something went wrong in chipping where it had a weird taste. So Iver just gave me some just to mess around with. And it definitely has like a weird yeasty taste, uh, which is probably accentuated by the fact that the shot is like 18% TDS and 21 or almost 22% extraction yield. So a very strong shot. 
So I'm going to give it a try again and, and maybe see if I can do anything. But it's uh, definitely interesting. Uh, interesting when shots go bad. So I also looked at how I could make a different view of the shot. So this is just an image warping to get more frontal. But then it kind of, it's like a weird mind thing because instead of coming straight down like a different camera angle, it goes differently. Um, but it'd be cool if, if I could change the, the uh, camera point of view or just get a camera right more directly below that's like integrated in. Um, and then I have one more with uh, where I did a kaleidoscope. So. This is just fun. I, I used uh, the whatever that app. Well, it's like one of the original iPad apps where you could do weird camera effects. I am traveling, so I brought Coffee Jack with me and a little grinder. And I did some cold press rebusa this morning, which uh, was a little more bitter. I feel like cold brew kind of brings the bitterness out for busta. Um, and you don't get other aromas that are pulled out when I pull the same rebusta hot. But I also have used a Keurig to kind of hack hot water. So I cleared out a, a pod and I put water in to put it through and then I put the coffee jack in underneath. But you have to trip, there's a little sensor to make sure that there's a cup in there. So you see the, the place cup light is blinking. So then I put my, my finger in the little spot and it's ready to brew. So that I used to make a first shot of Arabica. It was pretty good. Now. This shot was from a, a restaurant and I was like, I'll just get some espresso and it can't be too terrible. Well, it turns out it was pretty awful. Um, and my son had had um, orange juice, which was mostly finished, but there was a little bit left. And I was using the ice in the orange juice and I put a little ice in it. It tasted a little bit better. And then I said, I'll just dump the rest of this orange juice in, which is probably like, you know, two, three tablespoons maybe, not even. And now uh, what was nice is it, it, it cut out the bitterness, added that little sweetness, but it wasn't overwhelmingly orange juice. And I didn't do the fad of dropping an espresso shot into orange juice this year, um, and I don't intend to, but I would certainly recommend adding a splash of orange juice when you're out and about and have to drink shitty coffee. Um, I, I didn't try the salt technique that Scott Rayo used, but I'm sure that would work just as well.